This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. My guest today is Grace Ng. Grace is an artist whose work combines AR, VR, AI and neuroscience into artistic experiences that elevate the human consciousness. Grace is a tech entrepreneur. She's an angel investor. She's a neuro artist, as we've explained. Uh, She's actually also co-founder of the Lean Startup Machine, and she is a partner at the Stacks Accelerator and Grace is the creative force behind Crash Punks, which is an NFT collection of 10,000 uh, unique and generative art profile pictures as Bitcoin or Stacks uh, NFTs. And of course, Crash Punks is inspired by the kind of, I suppose it's iconic really, uh, the sci-fi novel Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Wow. Okay. This is quite an intro. Welcome to the show, Grace. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So what I'd like to do today, Grace, is obviously we're going to talk about uh, Crash Punks, the upcoming NFT collection, and also I think could be kind of a a fun way or an excuse also kind of to just celebrate uh, Snow Crash uh, by Neil Stevenson because it is such an iconic uh, novel and Neil's work has been uh, very influential across uh, the crypto ecosystem. But before we do that, Let's uh, let's learn a little bit about yourself. So let's start at the beginning. Could you please just um, yeah introduce yourself and, and give us a, a little bit about your uh, backstory and path into uh, I guess crypto. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you gave a great introduction. Um, so my background, I've been an artist, entrepreneur, designer, developer. Um, so I would say. I guess if we want to go uh, way back, you know, I've I've always loved to create, and I um, I guess I start off, you know, doing art, writing, and then that turned into designing and coding, um, and then that turned into entrepreneurship. So um, starting my first um, companies, and then um, so you know, one was Lean Startup Machine, where we were helping entrepreneurs. Um, turn their ideas into startups. Um, and then uh, from there was doing a lot of uh, mentoring and advising startups and um, running accelerators. And that brought me to running the Stacks Accelerator program. Um, so, so yeah, that brought me into crypto, crypto full-time where uh, we ran the first cohort and invested in 25 startups using Stacks to build on top of Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, then I think, um, I guess like in between all of that, I've, I've still had like a thread of artistry and music. And so I also um, created this art installation. So I think um, a few years ago, I was really interested in um, consciousness and neuroscience. And I was fascinated by how the subconscious mind um, just can run our world without us really understanding what's going on. And so I just wanted to bring that to light. And then I created an art installation that um, they're digital brain paintings. So they're digital paintings, generative art that reacts to your brain activity and shows your emotional or mental state. So if you're stressed or if you're calm um, or or if you're dreaming or um, uh, meditative, it'll, uh, the painting will react uh, and respond to that. And um, yeah, and then, uh, so I, I, I was kind of like at this intersection of tech, art, um, neuroscience, consciousness, um, and I uh, started creating this um, NFT collection because um, I'm I, you know, very passionate about this topic around um, consciousness and, and, you know, like human language and technology and just like futuristic sci-fi worlds as well and so um so yeah that's uh, I, uh, and then i also um created other nft pieces um even prior to this um i was working on uh, an nft art series called women's voices um, and that was to explore how language has been used um in asia to uh, influence women's uh rights and 
Um, so I was sharing some women's perspectives uh, through art on the blockchain, which at the time was very lacking. So I also wanted to bring more attention to the female perspective and um, uh, by portraying them in art pieces and minting them as NFTs. Fantastic, fantastic, Grace. And yeah, I mean, I think we'll, we'll circle back to uh, some of uh, yeah the, the different art projects uh, that you've been working on because they're all absolutely fascinating. But I think uh, we should start with with Crash Punks because you know that is, I suppose, the um, the big one uh, for you at the moment. And also, I know for you know the I suppose the the Stacks community are, are very much. Um, looking forward uh, to the minting of Crash Punks. So, well, why don't you give us, uh, I guess, the origin story, right, for for Crash Punks, which, as I think I've said, is is obviously Snow Crash. But yeah, take it take it a bit wider. So, um, you know, why why stacks, uh, why Crash Punks, uh, and why Snow Crash? What are the what are the threads that um, link all this together, Grace? So I start off, I initially, I really just like the Stacks project. Um, I think it is definitely um, the, the future and I really love their philosophy on um, decentralization and user owned internet. And um, that is also like, you know, kind of like um, portrayed in Snow Crash and Snow Crash itself is the book um, of Stacks and the Stacks ecosystem um, as well. So Hero, uh, the, uh, the, the wallet is also named after the protagonist in Snow Crash. Um, so I think, um, you know, I guess like Neil Stevenson really inspired, um, I, I feel like he really inspired a lot of these concepts not, that people are building out now. And so it's, it's also like a nice way to kind of just like, you know, incorporate the the story back into NFTs um, and tie that back in, and uh, yeah. And so I mainly I, I really like Stacks, and then I wanted to contribute some art to the Stacks community. Um, I think at the time um, I uh, decided to, or I had the idea, or decided to work on it. Um, there wasn't really much um, NFT activity. Um, or like uh, uh, it wasn't too active. Um, there wasn't much NFT collections. And so I really wanted just to contribute some um, art and kind of, uh, yeah, celebrate um, the, the legacy that Snow Crash created that we are all in one way or, or another building out now. Um, yeah. So the cool thing about Snow Crash, of course, is, and you know, we should give a, a, a gentle uh, tip of the hat, I suppose, to uh, Mr. Ste Neil Stevenson uh, for publishing Snow Crash. But it was published right back in uh, 1992. So obviously, um, you know, not a new book, uh, but it is certainly a an early classic of, I guess you'd call it the, the cypherpunk or cyberpunk uh, genre. And, you know, Snow Crash now is probably most famous, uh, particularly outside of crypto, um, for coining the term uh, metaverse, which, of course, has now become one of the biggest buzzwords of uh, this year. And perhaps uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, has been slightly co-opted uh, by uh, the evil corporation that is Facebook. So yeah, it's quite quite strange how this is all played out. But you know, Grace. Also, as you'll know, you know Neil Stevenson as a writer, he has, you know, it's not just a, a sci-fi novel, but he kind of also brings in you know history, linguistics, anthropology, religion, computer science, cryptography philosophy, mimetics, all these kind of different strands. And um, yeah, it was quite, uh, certainly quite imaginative uh, writing at the time and, and, you know, very much the early 90s or the late 80s uh, when he wrote it. Uh, when, 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 did you, when did you first uh, encounter Neil's work? Probably, I don't know, maybe like nine, 10 years ago. Um, yeah, and then kind of just like being astounded that I'm like, this is this is going to be the future. Um, so, yeah, I was quite, um, yeah, quite excited about it. Yes, indeed. And because you've talked about um, Snow Crash being 
a, a, I guess, a loose inspiration for Crash Punks, right? But I know there's there's other inspirations as well. I think, you know, kind of sci-fi and anime uh, in general, and also, you know, various parts of, of crypto, Bitcoin uh, stacks. So uh, talk us through what Crash Punks is then in terms of the characters uh, that you're portraying in the NFT collection and, and the different um, yeah threads of inspiration that come together for Crash Punks? Hmm. Well, I guess I, I think that that's kind of to be, um, we haven't disclosed, we, we're not mentioned sure. yet, so I don't, I don't really want to reveal, uh, you know, what, what the, you know, characters are going to be, so what can what can you give it give us what you can hint at then because and i mean there's been some there's been some i guess you'd call them teasers and like the crash punks discord and on the crash punks twitter and and like on your twitter so you, you can see some uh some hints of what the characters will look like right mm -hmm. yes yeah so let's see um well yeah they they take inspiration from um uh, different um, aspects. I mean, I, I in general just love cyberpunk and sci-fi. Um, so I'd say a lot of the characters have um, mohawks, um, and I think that's you know kind of like all the rage um, in a cyberpunk <laughs> dystopian <laughs> reality. Um, and uh, yeah, then I guess. Well, the way I approached it was, so even though they're inspired by um, some of the um, characters in Snow Crash, I, I also wanted to be very um, inclusive in the design of the characters. I also wanted to be very, um, I guess, conscientious of, of um, you know, being very inclusive. And so I intentionally designed them to be, um, I guess, in a way, uh, gender neutral, um, uh, gender or like androgynous, um, because uh, the way the characters um, come together, um, they can either be man or woman, and and it's can be hard to tell. Uh, um, I mean, there are some traits that kind of like lean more towards um, uh, you know one gender or the other, but for the most part, uh, they're gender neutral, and um, um yeah then they they're quite um they spread the the range I, I really wanted to be um conscientious of of being very inclusive um so that's probably something that um yeah I incorporated in there and I, I think Snow Crash in itself is inclusive um you know it's it's got like characters from all sorts of um uh, backgrounds and ethnicities so i think that in itself is inclusive and i kind of just like took it a step further and just um you know made the characters uh, uh you know there's a range of female characters male characters gender fluid um yeah so there is that and then yeah then also taking inspiration from other just you know cyberpunk sci-fi um, elements as well. Yeah, that, that makes sense, Grace. And of course, you know, as we start to dip our toes ever deeper into uh, the metaverse, then, you know, increasingly all of us will be, uh, you know, conducting our metaverse activities using avatars, right? And of course, you know, the, the cool thing about that is you can kind of project yourself to be whoever you want to be uh so it doesn't need to stick to one one gender or even one even human form you know you can uh, literally be anyone in the metaverse eventually but um like i'm just looking at the crash punks um twitter now grace and i can see the kind of the i guess the you know the, the profile pic that you guys are using on um yeah the the twitter crash punks at the moment is the, there's a subtle cue there because it's a as I guess it's like a kind of yeah cyberpunk android type figure with metaverse goggles on and a kind of a, a slick mohawk and a and a robot head and a, a, a cool hoodie but there's a pizza box kind of sticking out of his backpack which I take that as a fairly um, it's uh, that, that's certainly a subtle nod to 
hero protagonist who is um you know famously the 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 lead and it's quite strange that neil actually went to you know kind of directly called that main character the hero protagonist that's uh, quite brave of him but yeah he hero is famously a pizza delivery driver right yeah so i'm sure there'll be uh, lots of lots of other easter eggs and and things like that in the collection um as it unveils so probably should uh, tell the listeners a little bit more about um the mint date um and the minting process uh the mint cost the of the collection that kind of stuff grace yeah sure um so um a lot of what we're um doing we're also kind of um you know gathering feedback and working um hand in hand with um the hero team um the stacks larger community uh to make sure that everyone has a really smooth minting process so um stacks has an upgrade coming up uh scheduled for December 7th. So we're going to have our uh, minting shortly after that. So the mint date uh, right now would be December 12th. Very nice. And and is there a, is there a, do you know what the cost will be yet? Well, yeah, um, we're looking to price it at around um, 50 sacks. Okay, sure. And then from there um again i mean reveal whatever you want to reveal grace but um it'd be good to maybe just uh, understand kind of what the what the the future plans for crash punks are after after the the mint process like i think you know there's going to be a, a dow and um there'll be uh yeah various um opportunities i suppose for for crash punks holders Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. So, well, actually, so currently the, the mint price is 64 stacks um, and we're still deciding um, how to approach um, the, the, the actual launch um, and everything because uh, we have a lot of interest from different partners um, who want to use it for further utility. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things that we have lined up that are not announced yet, but um, but yeah, it's we expect it to unlock a lot of functionality. So um, initially, the NFT holders, who, uh, people who buy the NFTs, will be able to organize into a DAO, and then they're going to be able to vote on. Uh, you know, what kind of projects that they want to work on or how they want to manage the treasury or uh, because a certain percentage of the um, NFTs that are um, minted are actually going to be available, are going to be placed into the Crash Punks treasury so that um, it can be used for however the DAO um, wants to use it. So, so yeah, that kind of like gives the community an exciting um outlet and exciting kind of like adventure to design um it could be you know some people are thinking about designing games some people are designing um different experiences within the community uh that uh will be revealed soon and so that's kind of just like exciting way to bring the community together um some other ideas could be um airdrops with you know more um NFTs that are uh, to be revealed, um, uh, merchandise drop, um, and, and a big one is Q&A with the author of Snow Crash himself, Neil Stevenson. And so that's going to also take place for the people who get in early um, and buy a Crash Punk. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised when you say, Grace, that you've had uh, quite a bit of interest from, uh, I guess, other people around the crypto ecosystem uh, wanting to get involved at, at some level because, you know, I, I was talking to, as I think you know, I had uh, Trevor from uh, the Stacks Accelerator was on the show a few episodes ago and, um, you know, I think I said to him that, you know, Crash Punks it kind of combines, it combines Bitcoin through stacks, you know, Bitcoin plus NFTs, 
uh, plus Snow Crash. Um, and that just kind of it tickles the sweet spot of, I think, you know, so many people uh, in crypto or Bitcoin, um, myself included. But but then the fact that, you know, you as the artist, you know, you've the art itself um, that is going to make up this NFT collection. The art is really good. <laughs> it's really incredible from, I know we've only kind of seen a, a, a hint so far, but it, it does really look uh, super cool. So I can see that there's a lot of, there will be a lot of interest in this collection. And I guess it's, um, you know, this is what I said to Trevor, it, it kind of has the potential, I feel, to be kind of the, the breakout NFT collection um, on stacks and by, def uh, by default uh, Bitcoin, uh, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, bring, bringing NFTs back to Bitcoin. And if people kind of uh, don't know what we're talking about there, you know, um, feel free to, to have a listen to the episode, um, I think two episodes ago that I did with Trevor from Stacks Accelerator, because uh, we really talk in quite a bit of detail there about how the Stacks blockchain, uh, just for reference listeners, which used to be Blockstack, um, but Stacks is essentially uh, making Bitcoin programmable. So, you know, uh, for, for a long time, Bitcoin was uh, kind of missing out on uh, the wonderful world of DeFi and, and NFTs, but um, the Stacks community are doing a lot to bring those kind of decentralized applications um, effectively uh, to Bitcoin. So if you want to know how that works, do listen to that episode uh, with Trevor or just go and research uh, the Stacks ecosystem um, because it is all out there. It's all out there. Grace, you said you're doing a, a QA and a uh, with Neil Stevenson. How's that going to work? Uh, yeah, so it's going to be completely virtual. Um, and basically the audience or the, the NFT holders will get to uh, post the questions. It's an AMA with Neil Stevenson. So live AMA with Neil Stevenson, all the people who buy Crash Punks will get a chance. Um, well, if they get in early enough before it sells out, um, they get a chance to post their questions and um, have Neil answer their questions. Fantastic. And because uh, Neil, I think he's got a new book out, but he did. Did you listen to the podcast that Neil did with um, Lex Fridman? I think it was about a week ago. I, yeah, yeah, it was just recent. I have not had a chance to listen to it, but yes, he has a new book coming out. He does indeed. And um, I think you tweeted, I think I saw it from your, might have been Crash Punks or, or yourself, Grace, but there was a, this fascinating article that was published um i think in 2018 maybe 2018 or, or 2019 on uh i think reason.com and um yeah i think the article was slightly tongue-in-cheek but uh it was kind of making the argument that th there was a possibility uh that neil stevenson uh, neil, neil stevenson uh, could actually be uh, satoshi nakamoto the pseudonymous inventor of uh bitcoin are you fam familiar with that article yeah yeah i know about it yes what did you think do you think that there's any truth to that um it's funny i mean it, it points out a lot of um things that I'm, I'm sure in a way like it's you know the, it, it has inspired the the notion and i guess at that time uh, you know a lot of people were studying um crypt cryptography and cryptocurrencies and i'm sure um in a way he his writing can have inspired the the invention of it that that's possible um i think in a way writers artists they can all like predict the future because using their imagination they're able to write about a future reality that inspires the masses and in turn everyone kind of just like dreams bigger and then you know goes out to build that into reality so um so i'm sure i'm sure there was you know inspiration there yeah, I, th I think that's exactly right, Grace. I'm, I'm sure whoever the team behind the Satoshi Nakamoto pseudonym is or, or was, I have no doubt that um, they would have been familiar uh, with Neil's work. But it's just, a, you know, as the I'll, I'll probably I'll put a link in the show notes to the to the article just because it is fun to read, uh, listeners. And but the, you know the time the timeline kind of lines up as well because Neil was 
writing not just in snow crash but in a lot of the other his early work like cryptonomicon if that's how you say it and the baroque cycle you know all that stuff he was writing about cryptography digital currency the kind of the the breakdown of um of nation states and and governments and early versions of the metaverse all that stuff and he kind of cl- knew that there would be a come some kind of decentralized censorship uh, resistant digital currency would be necessary to make all this work so it's just you know all all, all the strands are there and um, they certainly line up uh 10 years uh, or more uh before the publication of the bitcoin white paper so just fascinating stuff in general right grace <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I also love kind of the, like the idea of like viral bitmaps um, and how like bitmaps can transform information and, and go viral. And um, and I, I, I think we see that happening, you know, I guess like we, we've seen that happening over and over again with internet memes and then now with NFTs where it's like the power of a JPEG. <laughs> That, that is exactly right. The power of a JPEG and uh, the power of meme, uh, a meme. Seize the memes of production. Uh, yes, indeed. All right. Well, as we start to finish off uh, this part of the podcast, Grace, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, just kind of hinted at, uh, at the beginning, but did, did you want to just, um, I th- yeah, I thought it was interesting because I was looking at uh, some of your other art yesterday uh, myself. So like um, there's a piece called Leftovers. There's a piece called um, Birth of a Girl. Do you want to just kind of talk to, um, yeah, the, the meaning behind the, the, that art? Yeah, sure. So the last few years I was um, exploring um, so I was living abroad in China, I was living in, in Thailand, Japan, Taiwan, and kind of just living across Asia. And then I was exploring how language has influenced um, women's rights. And, and then when I dug deeper into my research, I realized that embedded within the language, and this go, you know, goes back to Snow Crash, and, and I guess, you know, like, how how potent language can be. Um, so yeah, embedded within the language in the character design um, is, is inherently there is sexism within the character design or within the language that is used. So uh, for example, I learned that the character in, in Chinese, um, the character for Wicked has three female radicals. So um, a, a female radical represents the, the woman. And so essentially this character, the way it was designed, whoever created this, these characters thousands of years ago, um, you know, designed it, I guess, you know, with a, with a, like a sexist lens um, because there are three female radicals within that character and then um, within the phrases there are common phrases that are used so the birth of uh, uh, birth of a girl explores a phrase that is used in Chinese society Um, it's a phrase that literally translates to place emphasis on sons over daughters Um, and that's what it literally translates to so implying that sons are better than daughters um, and that is something that is embedded in, in the mindset of the culture and of the society, um, perhaps now less so in maybe the, you know, major cities, perhaps, but still very much, um, you know, we, woven throughout the fabric of society and the mindsets of um, uh, generations um, that have come before us. So, so yeah, so I was exploring that. And when I came across that phrase, it was quite shocking. And then I, I learned that historically, um, maybe because of the phrase and that mindset um, that was instilled and also because of the cultural revolution and scarcity, that when families gave birth to daughters, they would throw, uh, they would give the daughter up for adoption um, because of the one child policy and, and in favor of sons. So uh, they would give the daughter away for adoption or they would throw the daughter into the river um, and and that was quite shocking and so I decided to reframe that narrative and I created this piece 
birth of a girl to showcase um, a, a baby girl rising from the river. So kind of just flipping everything on its head. Um, and instead of being tossed into a river, she's rising from the river. She's rising from a treasure. Uh, uh, she's rising on this treasure um, nugget, which in Chinese language, it's, um, um, it is, I think, I think it's a homophone, um, if I'm recalling correctly, which is basically a homonym, which, which is basically the word for treasure is the same as the word for baby, uh, which is bao. Um, and so kind of like making the association of treasure is this baby girl or this daughter. And then having her surrounded by all these deities that um, people in China really worship. So it's the, um, the deity that represents fortune and prosperity and compassion and wisdom and longevity. So they're bestowing their blessings. Um, so yeah, so I was playing with language. I was um, also inverting the phrase on its head. Um, and then I learned in Japan, very similar, um, you know, very similarly, they have phrases in, in their language that, uh, you know, shame women or discriminate against women. So um, in Japan, what was historically used, um, uh, maybe like, you know, I, maybe in the 70s and the 80s um, was um, leftover Christmas cake um, to used to describe women. And that was to say that women are comparable to Christmas cakes where you don't want them after the 25th. Uh, so basically, you know, women have an expiry date um, after the age of 25. And so when I realized that, I was also in shock. And then I decided to create a piece um, also inverting that paradigm and uh, yeah, and reframing that narrative. Very interesting, Grace. And well, you're obviously uh, quite deeply embedded in, I suppose, uh, yeah, the, the Asian culture. And, you know, particularly in, in China has always had, China has a, a complex relationship with crypto, right? Um, and what what do you see happening in terms of, I guess, the, the Asian culture's um, embrace or, or not with, with uh, NFTs? In particular, because I can I can see that, and maybe in Japan, I would imagine would, uh, you know, they would uh, they would love uh, digital collectibles like NFTs. I'm I'm sure they do, but uh, I'm not really up with what's happening there. I'm sure you have a better insight and in, in, than me. What what do you see happening with, um, yeah, I guess the, the Asian uh, entry into the metaverse. Mm. Well, I think um, Korea is actually building its own metaverse yes um so i think it's like the first um country to be building its own metaverse um so that's pretty exciting i think they're pretty much like on board with creating this reality um and like the the stacks korea chapter is also very active um so i see korea and especially you know like the korean celebrities are also um exploring nfts um due to covid shutting down a lot of concerts and um i think fans in Korea um, and even, you know, across Asia, uh, you know, they really love collectibles, um, especially those that are created by their fa favorite celebrities. So I, I do see it taking off um, in the Asian market. Um, so with Korea, with Japan, we even have our, our own Japanese and uh, Korean Discord channels within um, the Crash Punk server. So that's really exciting. And, and they're very much looking forward to it as well. Um, I think China is a different story. I think China is, um, I think China, you know, I guess like with their policies, they're very quick to shut out foreign um, innovation so that they can home, you know, home, so that they have homegrown innovation um, and create their own versions of foreign innovation. And so we have, we have a um, China Stacks chapter as well. Um, I think on a policy, on a policy level, um, China's 
um, repetitively banned crypto, but then they're also coming out with their own digital currency. So I think that um, you know what China is doing is going to be just very similar to what they've done with everything else, with all other kinds of tech innovation. They want to shut out foreign innovation because they want their own entrepreneurs to succeed. They want their own um, technology to succeed. They want to build their own um, you know, within the country. So I think um, China is going, China has been, has in a way like leapfrogged the US in terms of digital payment and digital currencies um, because China uses WeChat. When I was living in China, I never touched paper bills or paper coins. Even the vendors don't take paper bills or paper coins. Um, all I had to do was just leave my house with a, a cell phone and that was it. Um, all the transactions uh, were handled within um, digital payments. So, um, so it's also not surprising um, that they issued their own digital currency. Um, but yeah, I, I think China in its in its own way is innovating on it. Um, uh, but you know, because it's such a large country, it's it could have, um, you know, it could have influence over everything else as well. Yes, indeed. Thank you for uh, your thoughts, Grace. Well, let's go to a very quick break and then uh, we will come back and finish off with the very famous crypto conversation hot take around. In today's crypto market, the team at Brave New Coin are the sector's leading builders of custom crypto indices. BNC's powerful indexing engine draws on Brave New Coin's premium data to calculate high frequency intraday and end of day indices for a wide range of index products. BNC's custom indices help you to gain exposure to the crypto assets class and track your performance against the market without having to become a stock picker. Not sure what you need? A Brave New Coin consultant can help you assess your requirements. Contact BNC today to find out more. All right, we're back and I'm with Grace Singh and Grace is the creative force behind the upcoming Crash Punks NFT collection on Stacks uh, slash Bitcoin. And it's inspired by Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. And yeah, it looks super cool. The art looks cool. I like it a lot. Can't really say anything more than that, but uh, Grace, I like to finish each podcast with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Yeah, sure. All right, Grace, how this works is just going to throw some questions at you. Just want your uh, quick snappy answers, hot take style. There's no right or wrong answers here. Just uh, have some fun. Question one is, where do you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist uh, to multi-coin opportunist spectrum? <laughs> I'm not a maxi myself. I think um, the the future potential um, is uh, the, the the market is pretty large, and I think there are there are going to be opportunities for different coins to exist. And um, I, I do think that Bitcoin is the most secure and um, I personally uh, am, you know, stacking my stacks and um, big on Bitcoin. Um, although I do think that, uh, yeah, there's going to be uh, other types of coins in the future. Yeah, hard to argue with that. Very pragmatic, Grace. I think I probably agree. Um, well, what would you say then is your firmest conviction uh, crypto opinion? Yeah, I think I think the future way of living and working is going to be all, you know, all tied to the blockchain in one way or the other. Um, I think uh, the future of work very much is going to be um, within these DAO structures. Um, so perhaps less so hierarchical, but more of these collectives coming together to to work on missions and passions. Um, and having, um, yeah, very collective, um, decentralized forms of governance. Yeah, very much agree, um, Grace. Well, Bill Gates famously said that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. 
Um, so whatever you like here, but maybe let's say let's say stacks or or let's say NFTs. What do they look like in ten years time? I think I think NFTs as JPEGs is just the beginning. Um, I think the value of NFTs, um, it's going to be unlocking more utility. It's going to be embedded in all types of things. It's going to be tied to all types of assets. Um, so we're looking, it could be real estate. It could be, um, uh, we have startups who are working on uh, diplomas. Um, and yeah, it could be tied to so much more. Um, JPEGs are just you know, art and JPEGs are just the tip of the iceberg. It's already disrupting the art and music industry, um, but this is just the beginning. Um, and I think Stax is going to be a huge player in the space um, because Stax is tied to Bitcoin. Um, it has the security of Bitcoin. Um, and I think it, Stax is only at, you know, the tip of the iceberg right now. It's only still in its infancy. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, Grace, uh, sci-fi author William Gibson said that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Can you think of an example of the future being here right now, uh, but most people just aren't really aware of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel oftentimes that I live in a bubble sometimes because, um, you know, I, I, I straddle, um, I guess, a couple of worlds and and even amongst my generation, um, I can be, you know, having conversations about the future of crypto and people who are just like living on cryptocurrencies. And um, but then uh, on the other hand, I can also be sitting in conversations with people who are the same age, who know nothing about crypto. And and, you know, and and this is not just um across the us it's across the world i mean it is not evenly distributed it's, the future is here um some people are living um in it um and the news still has yet to get out for other people um we still need to work on ways to make web3 more accessible um and there are more more and more people um joining and, and learning and getting in on it every single day um but we're not at the seven billion people mark yet that's right we have some way to go all right well time to zoom out time to get a little bit weird uh, for a second grace what do you see as the long-term future uh, for the human race do you see dystopia or utopia i would hope for utopia <laughs> um yeah i think i i personally I actually during during COVID, I actually wrote down what I wanted for the future post COVID, and my vision is, um, I I would have to pull it up actually, but it is I want happier, creative, problem solving people, um, and as a result, we'll have happier, healthier, sustainable lifestyle and planet and environment. I think so much of the um, societal conflicts and uh, wars and politics are all a result of um, unresolved traumas and um, lack of awareness. And I, I feel that um, if we can create a society of happier people and happier people can be people just doing what they love. And, and I think crypto really lends a way for people to do that. Um, crypto and the structure that is enabled um, by everything that's being built out uh, with DAOs. And um, and I think that, that, that future is very much within our grasp. Um, so I imagine a future where we'll have happier and healthier people because they're doing what they love and they're able to sustain a lifestyle doing that um, through this technology. And then um, as a result of that, uh, will lead to less destructive habits, will lead to, um, yeah, less, less destroying of the, the planet. And, um, and I think even within um, the DAO structures, I think, for example, a lot of um, nonprofits, a lot of more social impact oriented, um, non-capitalistic initiatives are not able to exist 
within the current structures of capitalism. And I believe that DAOs and crypto will actually really enable a lot of people to gather around missions that are uh, traditionally, you know, nonprofits or traditionally can't be um, fit into this capitalist structure. So, for example, um, advancing science research and resolving climate change and everything. I, I, I definitely think that um, this technology will lend way to that. Yes, indeed. Very nicely said, Grace. Time to finish this off. Uh, finally, what is your favorite science fiction book, uh, film, show, or universe? Well, I would say that another one. So besides, you know, a lot of like the the popular ones, um, Ready Player One, um, etc. I think um, something that also really um, blew my mind. Um, as well was this anime called Summer Wars and I really uh, enjoyed it when I watched it because I kind of saw that world playing out as well so it's it's very much kind of like all in the similar uh, vein of uh, you know everyone has this like identity in an alternate reality and so within Summer Wars, they have essentially kind of like a metaverse um, and everyone's identities is in there. Everyone, you know, represents themselves in there. Um, but then the system gets hacked and um, yeah. And then there's like a lot of stuff that happens, but, um, but yeah, I, I think when I watched it, I was just like, oh my God, that's going to be Facebook. And then, um, you know, lo and behold, <laughs> that's kind of, you know, also happening. So. Yes, indeed. All right. Very nicely said again, Grace. We'll have to look that up. Uh, Summer Wars. Time to close this out. Um, it's been excellent to talk to you today, Grace. Uh, I'm very excited by the Crash Bunks NFT collection. Very much uh, looking forward uh, to minting some myself. Please uh, close it out by telling people where they can go if they have hopefully become intrigued by the idea of Crash Monks and they want to get involved, uh, they want to join the Discord community, they want to perhaps mint some Crash Punks on stacks, where should they go, what should they do? Yeah, well you can go to crashpunks.com and that will lead you to our discord channel where you can join the conversation get all the updates um, about the exciting launch coming up and um, get more details as to what we have in store for all of you awesome sounds great can't wait uh thanks very much grace all the best and bye for now bye bye all right there you go that was grace and grace is of course yeah, the creator of Crash Punks. The date of the mint is uh, December 12. So it's the 12th of the 12th at 12 p.m. UTC. All 12s. And uh, and the price for to mint a, a Crash Punk is 50 stacks. Okay. So, yeah. But, of course, if you want to know, yeah, the nitty-gritty details, best place to go is simply uh, the Crash Punks Discord and you can get there by just going to crashpunks.com. Easy as that. All right. Uh, thanks very much for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Shout out to Neil Stevenson. Shout out to Snow Crash. Uh, shout out to Grace. Shout out to the future Crash Punks. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to the Crypto Conversation so you know when each new episode drops. But that's us for, for today. We're out of here. I'll see you real soon. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave, a new coin. See ya.